Chimpanzees are often looked at as cute animals due to how similar they are to us humans. But what most people fail to realize is that chimpanzees can become brutal killing machines capable of ripping the limbs off of people with ease. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying story of the Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary Disaster. Welcome to Final Affliction. The following story is regarded as one of the most brutal and horrifying chimpanzee attacks in recorded history. Our story takes place in the tropical jungle of Sierra Leone. Inside this green paradise, a wide variety of plant life and wild animals flourished until one day a war broke out, bringing with it a never-before-seen demand for land, fuel, and resources. Sierra Leone's population of chimpanzees suffered the harshest consequences as this war ravaged the once picturesque landscape they called home. Previously, a flourishing community of chimpanzees existed, intertwined by indestructible family bonds, and with a population of approximately 30,000. However, this population size was dramatically reduced to just a few thousand due to habitat destruction and ruthless slaughtering by the inhabitants of the jungle zone. These soldiers would typically kill the adult chimpanzees only to abduct their young and sell them off as pets within the local black market. This prompted several animal rights activists to call for the construction of havens where these animals would be protected from the vile greed and unceasing savagery of humans in hopes of preserving this now endangered species. The Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary is one of these havens located near the capital of Sierra Leone. This sanctuary has offered shelter for orphaned and traumatized chimpanzees for nearly 30 years. The abused chimpanzees that sought refuge in the sanctuary were scarred by years of abuse by soldiers throughout the war. For the majority of them, the slaughter of their families was their first introduction to humanity. Some had their teeth smashed in or were confined in cramped cages for days. Others were even made to consume alcohol for the amusement of humans. Regarded as a tourist attraction, Takugama attracts visitors from across the world, shining light on the consequences and cruelty of human expansion on the local wildlife. In 2006, Alan Robertson, Gary Brown, and Richie Goody were subcontractors working on the construction of the American Embassy Building in Sierra Leone when they were offered the chance to visit the Takugama Chimpanzee Refuge. The exciting offer made by their friend and local guide Melvin Mama was met with unanimous approval and the four men called for a taxi to begin the journey toward Takugama. The cab made the 30-minute trip up a mountainside to Takugama on Sunday, April 23rd. As they sat inside the taxi, the four men admired the gorgeous countryside while Melvin told interesting facts about the country's rich history. Unbeknownst to them, as their car mounted the final slope into the 100-acre preserve, things had gone horribly wrong on the other side of the front gates. Workers inside the refuge were in the process of feeding the chimps when a group of them suddenly became enraged and managed to escape the electrified fence surrounding the compound. This incident sparked one of the most brutal and gruesome chimpanzee attacks in recorded history. The chimps went on a rampage tearing apart anyone who was misfortunate enough to have crossed their path. The newly formed pack of chimps consisted of 31 young adults and was led by a chimp known as Bruno, a 270-pound, 6-foot-tall alpha male who suffered from severe trauma after he was taken from his mother as an infant. After witnessing his entire family get slaughtered by humans, he was later sold on the black market for a measly $30. It's not always the biggest and most aggressive male that commands the troop in chimpanzee culture. Instead, the elders of the pack choose a deserving leader. Even if a particularly powerful male defeats and coerces all of his rivals into submission, the chimpanzee society of elders may not give him their blessing to lead. Alphas are charged with the burdensome duty of looking after everyone and, if necessary, defending the entire pack down to its weakest member. Aside from being the undisputed Alpha, Bruno was a massive chimpanzee by any standards. 
He easily towered over every other member of his pack. It seemed that Bruno held a deep-seated hatred for humans, despite the kindness later shown to him by sanctuary workers. Hatred, which the four men, alongside their driver, Issa Kanu, were about to become all too familiar with. The vehicle soon came across a closed fence meant to keep unannounced visitors out. As the men sat, waiting inside their car, Issa blasted his horn in the hopes that someone would come out and open the gates for them. However, the sound of the car's horn had attracted the attention of the last thing the men wanted to see that morning, Bruno. Bruno soon emerged from deep within the forest, accompanied by his group of loyal, bloodthirsty followers. The chimpanzees soon encircled the taxi, screaming and banging at its doors and windows as the group watched in horror from the inside. Bruno was so big that the group initially mistook him for a gorilla. Quickly realizing the danger they were in, Issa put the car in reverse and hit the gas pedal as hard as he could. As the car suddenly flung backwards, Bruno gave chase and easily overtook the speeding vehicle. He jumped atop the car's hood, screaming angrily as he displayed his terrifyingly sharp teeth. He began bashing the car's hood and front windshield in an attempt to get inside the car. As the car continued to roll downhill, Bruno would shift his focus onto the vehicle's rear windows, smashing through the glass and beginning his assault by mauling Melvin. Bruno began biting his hand while viciously shaking his head, which tore through the flesh and bone while Melvin screamed out in pain. He struggled to fight him off with the help of his friends, but Bruno was too strong. Desperate to escape their predicament, one of the men told Issa to shift the automobile into forward gear. Upon doing so, the vehicle abruptly came to a stop and veered off in a new direction. Bruno, whose sharp teeth now sank as deep as they could inside Melvin's arm, was caught off guard by the sudden change in motion and was flung back out of the same window he came in through. Alan and Gary grabbed Melvin by the legs just before he was fully dragged out by Bruno, and the two men began hoisting him back inside the car. After the shock of the attack wore off, the pain began to set in. To Melvin's horror and disbelief, almost half of his hand, along with three of his fingers, were now gone. Gary attempted to calm Melvin down while tearing off a piece of cloth from his shirt to wrap around his hand, which now resembled a drooping mass of skin. Issa was beginning to lose his grip as fear and anxiety began to take over his mind. He was a local of Sierra Leone and knew what chimps were capable of. He had witnessed with his own eyes how a horde of chimpanzees could tear apart a human within seconds. Issa threw caution to the wind and continued pushing forward driving right through the bloodthirsty horde of chimps toward the locked gate of the sanctuary. He had every intent of ramming through the gate as the others pleaded for him to slow down. Eventually reaching top speed, the vehicle collided with the heavy metal gates. The collision was so violent that it briefly knocked everyone unconscious. Gary was awoken by the gut-wrenching sound of Melvin's screams. Gary looked around the now run-down vehicle, only to notice everyone had vanished and he was alone in the car. Gary turned his eyes to where the screams were coming from only to witness Bruno dragging helpless Melvin away from the car as the vicious horde began ravaging him. Adamant on saving his friend, Gary picked up a sharp wooden log after exiting the vehicle while letting out an angry roar in hopes of attracting Bruno's attention away from Melvin. Most wild chimpanzees shy away from direct confrontation with humans, even though they are much stronger physically. A human's natural posture makes them appear taller and more intimidating to the chimpanzee. Domesticated chimpanzees, however, or at least the ones who spent a good portion of their lives living among humans like Bruno did, quickly realize the physical advantage they possess over humans, both in terms of strength and agility. Bruno, who accepted the challenge, began the charge towards Gary, pounding and flailing his arms around as he stood on his back legs to appear taller. Bruno, who was six feet tall, easily towered over Gary, who was only five foot nine. But Gary remained calm as the beast leapt onto him. Gary raised up his weapon, struck Bruno in the neck and knocked him down. Bruno attempted to get up, but Gary wouldn't let him. Bruno's pack froze in fear as Gary pummeled him over and over with the wooden log. 
Bruno, who later gave up and began showing submissive behavior towards Gary, retreated back into the forest and disappeared. Witnessing the defeat of their leader, the angry horde of chimps grew even quieter as they dissipated into the forest from where they came. After his victory, Gary turned his eyes toward Melvin while trying to pull him up onto his feet. Melvin could no longer stand on his own as it appeared Bruno had bitten off most of his right foot. After making sure the horde was gone, Gary informed Melvin was going to find help. As he traversed the unfamiliar forest, he eventually came across Richie and Alan. He instructed them to go and find help while he tended to Melvin, but before they left he noticed Issa was nowhere to be seen. Richie informed Gary that after Issa's failed attempt at breaching the sanctuary's metal gate, he exited the vehicle and climbed over it while leaving the rest of them to fend for themselves. As he headed toward the main road, Gary nodded in disappointment before warning the two men to stay vigilant and watch their backs. After eventually getting back to Melvin, he tied another piece of cloth around his right foot in attempts to stop the bleeding. Melvin leaned on Gary's back for support as the two made their way toward the main road where they eventually came across a military van. Apparently, Richie and Alan had managed to reach a military patrol unit and inform the soldiers of their whereabouts. The van soon picked them up and rushed Melvin toward the nearest medical facility where he could receive treatment for his injuries. Gary breathed a sigh of relief as he knew Melvin and the others would be okay, yet he still couldn't believe or fully process the events of this horrific day. While Gary, Melvin, Richie, and Alan all made it out safely, a crueler fate awaited Issa, who was later found bloody and torn apart. His jawless, disemboweled body was ravaged beyond recognition. The angry horde of chimpanzees appeared to have caught up with him, tearing all four of his limbs from his body before feasting on his remains. Bruno, on the other hand, could never be found. While 27 of the 31 escaped chimps were eventually retrieved, Bruno was among the four who were not. Many attempts at locating and bringing back Bruno were launched, and all were met with failure. Even though sightings of Bruno were regularly reported, to this day he still manages to somehow evade his pursuers. It's almost as if he's developed heightened senses that warn him when he's being hunted by humans. Fitting considering the amount of abuse he'd suffered because of humans. The group will never forget their close encounter with death in the forest of Sierra Leone. Gary, in particular, suffered from nightmares for months after the terrifying incident. He considers himself lucky that he managed to fight off Bruno and rescue Melvin. He's thankful of being able to reach safety, unlike Issa, who was tragically ambushed by the savage beasts, screaming in horror as he succumbed to his final affliction.